determination, does not care about origin, wealth, or poverty. Jimmy was born in Seattle in 1942, from Lucille, who was just 17 years old and Al Hendricks, who at the time was enlisted in the Army, after the attack on Pearl Harbor. In the early years, Lucille and little Jimmy lived in desperate economic conditions and precariousness. At the age of three and a half, after being tossed in the care of his aunt, grandmother, and strangers, he met his father. He grew up between the jealousies and alcohol abuses from both his parents, and developed a form of stuttering, that accompanied him throughout the adolescence, for which he was often mocked. Despite the poor conditions, around the age of 10, Jimmy discovered the radio and his interest in music. He used to pretend to play a broom like it was a guitar. Jimmy never took proper music lessons, but learned something in middle school from the boys in the neighborhood. He changed four schools in three years due to continuous transfers, and this didn't help his school education. He often skipped school to visit the houses of various musicians, including Dave Lewis who played an important role in Jimmy's life. He was a source of inspiration for the kids in the neighborhood, he had a piano in the basement, and his door was always open. He also played the guitar, and was a man always ready to encourage the neighbor. That very familiar and welcoming environment, was inspiring for the kid, who had a chaotic family and a troubled history. He was taught that creativity is a positive factor. This informal school, the Rhythm Blues School in the basements and the back of the Seattle houses, became Jimmy's equivalent of an high school. Music took an ever-increasing role in his life, and he became very good with the guitar. The greatest joy of his adolescence was when, at the age of 16, he received his first electric guitar. Hendrix's absolute poverty, the mother's death when Jimmy was only 16 years old, and the continued and numerous episodes of his father's violence, led Jimmy to run away from home. He discovered, that at the kiosk where a friend was working, at closing time they threw away unsold burgers and chips, that was how Jimmy managed to get his daily meals. He found himself sleeping in abandoned cars, and got arrested with charges of stealing them. The second time, he ended up in Seattle's detention center, that was strongly criticized for racial brutality. Jimmy was defended by an office attorney who granted him a two-year sentence. The sentence would be suspended if Jimmy had served in the army. The next day, at age 19, Jimmy signed up for three-year service in the army, but his adventure in military training camps didn't last long. However, military service gave Jimmy two good things, a deep friendship and music collaboration, that lasted 10 years with the bassist Billy Cox, and the most extensive nourishment of all his life. He received three meals a day. Jimmy was soon aware of the unsustainable environment and too little time available for his music. After about 10 months, he was dismissed by requesting psychiatric visits, and declaring himself homosexual. This statement allowed him to be removed from his compatriots, because it was considered dangerous at the time, and dismissed by military service in advance. In the following year, practicing with the guitar was the main activity for Jimmy, and soon became very skilled and virtuous. His goal became to earn a living as a musician. It wasn't easy, but Jimmy developed an unbridled ambition, and deep confidence in his own destiny. He created a dense network of musical knowledge. With his guitar always on, Jimmy started to travel a lot, and work as sidemen for renowned musicians, like B.B. King, Little Richard, Ike and Tina Turner. It was a night in May 1966, when the 22-year-old Linda Keith, a wealthy British English girl and passionate music fan of the so-called Swinging London, saw him. At the time, Linda was the girlfriend of Keith Richards from Rolling Stones, and witnessed the genesis of the Stones, which related her to the nobility of English music. That night, Linda saw Jimmy playing, and immediately recognized an extraordinary ability. But seeing him play in front of such a scarce and indifferent public, ignited her sense of justice. Thanks to this encounter, Jimi Hendrix's life and career evolved one after the other, Shortly from there started his experience in England where he met all the greats of the time, the Beatles, 
The Who, Eric Clapton. Eventually he founded Jimi Hendrix's experience. How can we be inspired from the story of this great artist? Jimmy began to believe more and more in himself. The opportunity to experiencing positive relationships has given him confidence, recognition, and valorization. It is important to have a story like that of Jimi Hendrix, because it tells us, first of all, how important it is to not only have a personal gift and resource, but to be able to recognize our talent, cultivate it, and know how to express it. The precious presence of these features, combined with determination, can offer opportunities and occasions of life, otherwise unavailable. Living the Gift Life Stories to Inspire Us